Remember how we can actually look at different ways to visualise fractions. We could use words, so we might have three tenths, symbols, three over ten, pictures, three shaded parts out of ten equal parts, and three tenths on a number line where there's ten equal spaces between zero and one. Now all of those ways can help us because when we're counting fractions, things like this are really useful. So how could we show tenths? Well, let's take this. It's a rectangle. Let's call that our whole, or one. If we divide it into ten equal pieces, they're tenths. So that would be one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, and we can jump up to seven tenths. And then if you colour the whole lot in, you've got ten tenths, which is the whole, or one. See how they're worth exactly the same amount? They take up the same amount of space. One is shown in tenths and the other as a whole number. So when we compare fractions, that really helps us. So if we want to think which is larger, six eighths, well, there's our whole divided into eight equal pieces. And if we shade six of them, that's what six eighths looks like. Now we need the exact same size whole for this one. And again, it's eight, so we're going to compare six eighths to two eighths. So we need to shade two parts. And you can see that six eighths takes up a lot more space than two eighths. Six eighths is a lot more than two eighths, and it's much closer to a whole. But what if they look different? What if we need to compare these three fractions? One of them's a picture, but it shows six out of eight equal pieces. Our symbols show five of eight equal pieces, and our words show two of eight equal pieces. So they've all got the same denominator of eight. We've got six eighths, five eighths, and two eighths. So we can still actually think about how big they are. Because we've got the same denominator now, we can actually write them all as symbols. And now we can see they're in order from largest to smallest. Six eighths is bigger than five eighths, which is bigger than two eighths. Well, now we're going to throw something else in. This time we've got different denominators. We've actually got two out of four equal pieces, three out of eight equal pieces, and two of eight equal pieces. But what we can do, if we actually draw some lines, our four equal pieces can be made into eight equal pieces. Now look, we didn't change the size of our hole, nor the amount of space that's shaded, but we've just made it eight pieces. They're smaller, but we've got eight instead of four. So instead of two out of four, we've got four out of eight equal pieces are shaded. Our Symbols are still 3 out of 8, and our words are 2 out of 8. So we've got 4 eighths, 3 eighths, and 2 eighths. And now we've got the same denominator, we can compare the numerators and see that they're in order from largest to smallest. 4 eighths is bigger than 3 eighths, which is bigger than 2 eighths. Now you could have also done this a different way. You could have created a picture of all of them and seen which had more of the shaded areas. Now for our last example, we're going to use a number line to order these fractions. Now we've got two fractions with five as our denominator and two with 10 as the denominator. So let's think about how we might do this. Well, if we think of one fifth, if we actually divide that into smaller pieces, we now have tenths. So one-fifth is the same as two-tenths. And four-fifths, we can also rule a line there, is the same as eight-tenths. So if we put them on a number line and we split our number line into ten equal parts, one-fifth is the same as two-tenths, two-fifths is four-tenths, three-fifths is six-tenths, and four-fifths is eight-tenths. So we can plot our numbers. So one-fifth is there on the two-tenths mark. Then we've got one-tenth, nine-tenths, 
and 4 fifths, which is the same as 8 tenths. And we can actually see that the smallest of those is 1 tenth and the largest is 9 tenths. So we actually used the same denominator to plot them on a number line.